yeah, it was worth it. It was yeah. worth it. The challenge was uh, getting the participants together because uh, the same experts that you want them to this meeting are also having some other assignments back in their offices. So mobilizing the relevant experts, it has been uh, quite challenging. Our ministry is the coordinator, uh, bringing together uh, experts. Maybe we need to improve. I feel we are better, I'm a better, better prepared uh, case uh, now than I was before. I have learned, I've gone through several sort of operating procedures for several ministries. As an administrator, it has been a great learning experience for me. I think all countries, including mine, should have simplified rules and procedures for emergencies so that we do it faster. The, the, the practices we do in our countries are too long. And if we have to make this world one village, as we say, it's a couple of village, on the spirit of integration, then those are the things we should look at. It will be, it will be a, great, a gift for some of us to help the countries largely. We were prepared, but now we have got something which has stimulated us and we are now eager to work together as a multi-sectoral, as one health, effectively using our guidelines and SOPs we have in the country. This simulation exercise made up to work together, to be one thing. Ni muhimu sana kwetu sisi wanajeshi kushiriki mazwezi kama haya. Nye matukio kama haya ya majanga, Eh, tunajua kwa makazi ya jeshi pale ambapo kuna kuwa hakuna eh, vita linasaidia katika majanga mbalimbali the biggest challenge in this field exercise was we had so many people who were playing in different sites in the two countries that is Tanzania and Kenya we had a logistics nightmare where we had to ensure that every person was in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. I participated in a number of planning meetings from last year uh, that saw fruition of the exercise. And I think uh, it was a nice experience because I realized that uh, we need to have uh, the One Health approach eh, when we are responding to emergencies. Eh. I'm very excited for the for the what happened for the for the during the FSX. It was a big lesson. We realized a lot of uh, gaps because we used to do a lot of tabletop exercises whereby we used to sit on the tables and uh, plan and say we will do that, this and that. But when it comes to the time, really time of doing it, it's something different. So to me, I would think this um, field simulation, or rather drills for specific functions, they are very, very important. For me, I would say it's been an eye-opener, despite us not having you know, complex emergencies or big emergencies, emergencies that require big responses. We could actually use simulation exercises as evidence-based assessments for us to be able to pick uh, the gaps in the systems and then try and strengthen this so that we can improve our capacity to respond to emergencies as a country. Whatever we'll have found from the evaluation from the excess the evaluation report is what we will put into use and the gaps that have been, have been identified we put into place, develop plans to strengthen some of this and fill in the gaps that we have within the system. I think my main lesson learned here is to follow up with my country counterparts on each uh, agreed plans and uh, um, SOPs we develop to make sure that they are taken down into the implementers and the implementers understand them well in order to use them for their daily activities in preparedness, but also when they trigger the response, they should know what to do at what appropriate time. And the other approach maybe is to include uh, government contributions to these exercises because uh, they are benefiting. Yeah, there is a lot that I've learned, and there is a lot that I didn't know, and there is a lot that I have unlearned also.
the whole exercise was fairly new to me. 90% of the time I was learning. Me personally, I, I really enjoyed the whole exercise. I liked how it was organized. The whole thing was successful. And I can tell uh, us that uh, if with proper follow-up, with um, just small follow-up, just to see that the gains are not lost. I think my important lesson as a regional actor is that for successful regional events, coordination, efficient coordination is paramount, is very important. And uh, as regional coordination requires efficient communication between the actors. So to me, that's one of the key lessons that I, I picked, that uh, for us to be able to coordinate and play our role, we need to receive information in time and act on it. And when we, we send out information, we also expect quick response. Without that, we cannot respond in time to, 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 to address the issue of emergencies. Uh, at the national level, we have contingency plans, we have uh, strategies that we've developed, but most of them have not been disseminated to the lower level. Uh, so so we, we need to do that so that we borrow from the national level plans and develop local level plans which are context, uh, contextualized uh, in the area where they're supposed to be used, and standard operating procedures, or even checklists for people at the front line. Uh, they don't know, need to know much about the strategy, but they just need to have a checklist, or just a, a standard operating procedure, knowing what to do when and when to do it. Uh, Kim Singh, sisi kama wiraya, na mimi kama mushiriki mkuu kwenye shuguri ya maandalizi mpaka utekerezaji, Nimejifunza mambo mengi sana. Sana. Jambo la kwanza nimejifunza namna jinsi ya, ya kutekeleza au kutatua changamoto hizi za magonjwa mpakani hasa ya milipuko kwa pamoja kama timu. Kwa maana timu watu wa idara tofauti tofauti mnajumuika pamoja kuweza kushambulia tatizo ambalo linajitokeza We've spent the best part of a year, all of us together, working on this program and there's been an awful lot of, of thought and resources and time go into an exercise like this. So it's hard to do this on a very frequent activity. And these types of things are as much of a learning exercise for us as it is for anybody. This field simulation exercise had been an eye-opener and it had provided opportunity to reassess and to reevaluate the progress made to date, especially in terms of the document that had been developed, in terms of human resource capacity, in terms of outputs, and in terms of coordination collaborations between sectors, and in terms of partnering between states and between different actors and stakeholders in the field. Based on the field activity and based on this exercise that we just concluded, I've come to a conclusion. There's a lot of capacity at the district level, at the sub-national level, which are yet untapped and effectively utilized. So the national government will need to think of a strategy to incorporate and to collaborate with the sub-national government to be able to maximize or optimize the potentials that are there at the lower level. Little nitty-gritty things were tested, were assessed, and surely, like a normal life, there were challenges. A simple challenge, there was a meeting of the district committee here in Longido. It was supposed to start at 8 o'clock. The bus were picking up the people, but the bus didn't have petrol. It's a very normal situation, but then you must make a plan. It's not that there are petrol stations all over here, so you need to look for the next petrol station. Fill up, already you are no longer in plan. Others are waiting, that are relying on your input. So all these things, how do we work together? Getting a feeling also to, if I delay, all the others in the chain also delay, and at the same time, the disease is spread and people must die, might die. So we are all relying on each other. And if one is a weak link, the chain might break at this, at this angle. 
Um, what I found very um, interesting is to see here is the commitment from the people and the participants. And uh, that's also, uh, you know, one of the benefits from, from an exercise is that people actually, they enjoy. And, and they are doing their work because that's their work, but they are really committed and they want to learn also. And, and, and they are eager to take the lessons and they are eager to take those lessons further. And that's the whole purpose of this exercise, is to build and to enhance our preparedness and response to better be ready for the next emergency. You know, we, you really have to have that national ownership, first of all, and having a team that is not just only committed, but also has the authority to make decisions. So, um, to give you an example, we have this exercise management team that is uh, helping with the planning, the implementation and the evaluation of the, of the exercise. And really, the, uh, the, the purpose of that team is not just to do the groundwork, to do all the paperwork, all the scenario building, etc., etc., but also to get their uh, political commitment. Because if you do not have that, again, you don't have the national or regional ownership, then whatever the outcome of the exercise is, is probably less likely to be taken on board and taken forward. So I think that is really a key, um, a, a critical aspect that, that we need to make sure of. And I think it worked out very well in this particular exercise. A field simulation exercise, it would need constant people because if you keep changing people on board then it becomes a challenge because you have to keep on starting to explain what is happening, what should happen. Next time you get another new person you have again to start explaining and bring that person on board. So it is very necessary and important that we bring the people who you get from the word go, you nominate someone who will take through up to the field simulation exercise. So it's very important that uh, different ministries understand that it is good to have that one person to be on board till it is full scale. Our ministry being a coordinating ministry, then I think they become the main focus that once maybe, for example, most of our work is to coordinate the other ministries that are involved in this. And uh, it's important that letters are done very early and in advance so that uh, we give ample time for the other stakeholders that the other agencies like maybe ministry of health ministry of agriculture they get this communication early from our ministry because being a coordinating ministry we have to be on top of things yes we have to do things very fast to enable them do whatever they're supposed to do, yes. We should not leave it at, at this. It should be a continuous process so that this was done at Namanga border. We have other several borders around and uh, I would say maybe these other borders are not aware. They may read but they not be able to understand what exactly you mean. So it's good that even at maybe partner states level, they just come up with field simulation exercise at their borders, maybe uh, like bilateral, the agreement, then they do a field simulation exercise just to make sure that people are aware of these things when they come to happen.